Now enough of theory, let's move on to creating our first stateless bean. So new and session bean and let's name it stateless bean my stateless bean. So select stateless over here and select the local interface over here. Finish. So here's your bean. So basically bean is nothing but a simple object or simple class labeled or annotated with stateless. Now this bean implements an interface which is right now empty. So let's just create a single method in it. So let's create simple method say hello and it takes a string named name okay so save it and over here let's implement that method okay so basically this is just a simple pojo pojo sense of plain old java object implementing a simple interface the interface is labeled with local. Now by local we mean that this bean can be accessed only by local clients. Now who are the local clients as you have seen in this diagram. Local clients are nothing but components in the web layer or other beans in the service layer. These are the remote clients they can't access it because we have marked this bean as local. If instead of this I had marked it remote they would have been accessed by remote clients too. Let me change this first. Now let's consider the same client for EJB. Now this is the client we had used for JPA. We are going to use this again for testing our EJBs but we are going to study singleton bins later on so don't worry at all about it. Just consider that this method is going to run when the application is deployed to the server. Again the same warning like in JPA, singleton beans are not meant to test your application. Here we are just using this facility of startup which is only there in singleton beans which creates the instance of this bean when the application gets deployed and this method runs when the instance gets created. So this somehow acts like our main method. That's the only purpose we are using singleton. So here is the interface which this stateless bean implements and the bean is labeled as stateless because of this annotation this bean is a stateless bean it's nothing but a simple pojo and the bean implements the interface methods so let's inter implement this method so let it return what hello and name okay and let's now call this stateless bean so how is this client going to use this bean? It's extremely simple. So so basically you create a field and inject it using EJB. Notice the field type is the name of the interface. It's not the name of this implementation. So the client basically doesn't have direct contact with the implementation. It interacts with the client using the interface. Now let's call the say hello method and we'll call the bean. My bean dot say hello and give some name. Save and run the application. And here's the output. Hello Ash. As a side node, always use dependency injection for getting access to the bean. Never use the Java new operator which some newcomers sometimes do. If you use new, basically you are just having a simple object instance. There is no features provided by the container to your bean. Let's now access the database using our stateless bean. So over here, I will paste a method and get all animals is going to retrieve all the animals from the animal table. And let me save this first and over here let's implement all the abstract methods. So just as we have seen in the chapter on JPA, let's inject the entity manager first. Private entity manager. Let's name this as EM and over here let's use the persons in context annotation. 
the unit name is I just press control space and NetBeans auto enters it for us from the position.xml file let's create the query over here so query is equal to entity manager dot create query and we'll type the query over here select a from animal a so let's create a local variable okay and now uh, we know that it's going to return an animal class okay so we mention it over here and we can convert this query into a typed query okay and let's return query dot get result list okay so this method will return the list of all the animals in your database in the animal table in your client after injecting the bean let's call that method my bean dot get all animals okay and let's assign it to a list variable create local variable let's display the list okay for each animal let's display its type animal dot get type save and run the application and here's the output all the animals in our animal table now let's understand the life cycle of a stateless session bean there are just two phases in the life cycle of this bean either it doesn't exist or it's in the method ready pool where it can accept requests from the client so first of all the instance of this bean gets created after that all the injections takes place so what are the injections for example in our case created an entity manager we can inject some other resources too we'll see some resource injections later on so after that the post construct method runs you can annotate one of your methods in the bean as post construct and that method will run after all the injections takes place so this is the method where you will initialize the bean here when the constructor runs you do not have access to the resources which are injected after that bean is in the method ready pool when it gets into the pool clients can call or you can say get serviced by the bean and later on when the server decides to recover some memory by trimming some instances from this pool then a method annotated with pre-destroy is called on that bean now let's code this lifecycle methods post construct and pre-destroy okay post construct public void in it and let's print something okay and let's create another method for pre-destroy so the name is pre-destroy the annotation is pre-destroy or rather let's name it cleanup okay I'm cleaning up okay now let's save and run this application so as you can see the post construct method has run before a method was able to service the client so as mentioned in the diagram this method runs before it can accept client requests now let's check for this pre-destroy method let me go to the service tab and let's undeploy this application and let's see if it runs okay it has run I'm cleaning up now you may be wondering that how come the post construct method was run only once if there is a pool of instances then for each instance of this pool this method should have run it's because it's all upon the configuration of the server so Glassfish decided to create just one single instance that's why we just have one post construct method running